Hi everyone, welcome to the latest Total Running Club podcast. I'm Jeffrey Ross and today we have a very special guest who's an old friend of mine, Karsten Corbell. Hi Karsten. Hi Jeff, thanks for having me today. No problem, good to have you. We've been trying to get this organized for a while. Now, many of you will, will know or recognize Karsten or have heard his name. He is very much a veteran of Malaysian running. He's the big German. He's a guy who is the owner and manager of Fit Orange, which is an EMS fitness studio, which we'll talk about later. Um, Carsten, uh, very knowledgeable in running, very knowledgeable in training, and that, that's why I wanted to get him on, on the show today. So, Carsten, I always like to introduce the guests and ask um, for a quick background. Um, especially from overseas on, on what got you here to Malaysia. So uh, give us a quick version of, of how you ended up living in, in Malaysia from, from Germany. All right, yeah. yeah. I came to Malaysia uh, as part of my first job in 97. Uh, spent three years here on a project. During that time, I always say I was in the age where you look for a wife. I met my wife here, a Malaysian. Uh, and uh, then... Uh, in the year 2000, we, yeah, we left Malaysia for overseas projects and eventually returned in 2011 back here to Malaysia. So yeah, now this time around, I've been here for 10 years. Okay. So is Malaysia what you consider home or do you still feel Germany is your home? Yeah, I mean, uh, I consider Malaysia my, my, my home, certainly. But I also feel blessed to have uh, Germany to be the place where I was born and grew up and always be a place where I can return to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can relate to that. Uh, now, we first met uh, about, I think it was about 10 years ago um, at a running race. I think it was in Seremban, yeah. but I can't be sure exactly. Seremban, yes. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I remember seeing you there. We didn't actually chat, but then I saw you at a couple more races and then eventually... Um, I, I got up the courage to talk to you because you were you were quite scary looking guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard I don't look very inviting, and even if I make jokes, I, I don't show that I make jokes. I understand, yeah, yeah. but yeah. luckily we eventually managed to talk. Yeah, I mean, I've never heard you tell a joke, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you, you try, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, no. I mean, I just to appreciate that I, that I don't give up on trying. <laughs> That's important, right? So yeah. Running as well, yeah. Uh, yeah so, good, so how running. how long have you been running? We're going to talk about a bit about running first before we talk about strength and yeah. conditioning and EMS. So, how long have you been a runner? Yeah. yeah. Actually, I mean, I've been running, jogging, so to say, uh, for yeah, for, for many years. I, I always used this complementary exercise to my sports I did when I was younger, like soccer, volleyball, and other things. Uh, well, really, my really first very uh, my very first running event was 2011 here in KL. It's in a chartered KL marathon. Uh, signed up for the half marathon at the time was quite a big decision and quite a big distance uh, at the time for me. And I think there are still some photos around where yeah, really this this uh, German steam machine engine comes in huffing and puffing, eyes closed, and a very big shirt. The air resistance must have been amazing or a lot there. Yeah, it was I just managed under two hours. Very proud of that. But that really uh, yeah, was my first experience at the running event. And uh, it really got me there. The, so the, yeah, the running bug bit me at that mm -hmm. time. And uh, haven't looked back since. Uh, quickly started structured training. Uh, was just about uh, before turning 40 after uh, the KL marathon at the time. So I wanted to do a full marathon before I turned 40, managed to do that. And then I just continued running and uh, it's always has been a pleasure to run here in Malaysia. The running scene has been growing tremendously since then. And uh, a lot of good friendships developed out of that. Mm. Yeah, I, I think the running community here is, is very special. Probably in, in every country it's the same, but, but I, th I think here especially so. Uh, I'm the same as you have developed a business in, in that niche and uh, naturally all your customers become become friends or yeah, most of them do and yeah. that's nice. Yeah, it's a good group. It's really here. big. Yeah. yeah, it's really big. 
Yeah. Now, I, I remember you did a, a fast marathon. Was it in Seoul? Uh, must have been about five, six yeah. years ago. Yeah. What was it? Three yeah, there was, a, there was 2013, yeah. 2012, 2013, I was pretty much at my peak uh, yeah. so far. I mean, uh, still more to come, but 2013, yeah, it was just like a good friend of mine uh, lives there in, in Seoul. And, uh, well, at that time, I was just collecting full marathons, you know, like ex excited runners are. They just try to sign up everything that is not fully, fully uh, sold out yet. So I booked Seoul, uh, registered there. Uh, Good opportunity to meet up uh, yeah, with an old friend. I ran it and it was a complete surprise. I mean, that was a uh, another big, big learning curve there. Uh, cold weather, I was used at the time to Malaysia. Uh, yeah, the 30 degrees that we have here every day, 95%, uh, 100% humidity. And then so the race started at, uh, at nine o'clock in the morning and there's this big thermometer at the square where they start and it was mine, uh, it was, four degrees yeah, it was still plus but it was four degrees uh really really cold uh yeah but i still handled well uh got some good advice at the time how what to prepare what to wear before the start and uh, to wear several layers that you can strip off as you warm up uh, during your run so it went, it went really well and uh at that time my, my full marathon time was like three three forty three forty five minutes and there i suddenly found myself just running by feel and I found myself with the 310 and even for a short while with the three hours paces, uh, which was amazing. And uh, I, I just wouldn't get tired. So the typical <laughs> tiredness fatigue wouldn't kick in. It was just an amazing feeling uh, that you could keep on going. And eventually I finished in 306, uh, my, still my, my, my personal best and uh, personal best that I still want to beat. But yeah, it was it was a great great experience, and it just shows well, well a good place to train in, in Malaysia to run a marathon in, in Malaysia, and then when you go overseas, you can really really rock. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I mean, that's a fantastic achievement. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, running later, and, and I know you've got a sub three goal, like like we all do, uh, or any any sub hour target yeah. is, is sick in the head. It was, you, you've been very it was sub three, it. yeah. My hashtag was uh, sub three B four fifty early this year, but let me look at my clock. <laughs> I won't make it. I won't make it. But now it's like sub sub three after fifty. So I guess. Yeah, can be done. Can be done. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of us, and I have to include myself in that. You know, we're we're not getting any younger, <laughs> but the the targets are still there, and if you train smart and train. Yeah consistently then anything can be achieved i'm a great believer in that yes uh, okay we'll come back to some of that uh, and I, I want to talk to you later about um about how you train as a slightly heavier runner you're, you're a muscly yeah. guy compared to me so we'll come back to that i'll just make a note of that but i want to i want to touch on on your journey from being a technology guy and uh yeah being in that that sector and now you're you're running a fitness business so Again, give me a quick version of, of how that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, by profession, I'm an electrical engineer and, and MBA. Uh, worked in telecommunications, mobile telecommunications, my whole previous life. And they yeah, I switched to, to fitness in, uh, in 2015. Uh, prior to that, yeah, I, I mentioned earlier, 2012, 2013, I was at my running peak. Uh, lost a bit of fitness there because of work, uh, big projects going on. And then in 2014, I tried to come back uh, and were, I was looking for ways uh, that contribute to performance. I mean, running, running training is one thing, but of course there are supplementary uh, things that you can do to become better. So one of them is the strength training, which uh, I found very promising. But then again, strength training means typically you go to gym, spend uh, Again, tremendous time there, two hours, four hours, six hours a week, just to complement your running, which I found too much. So I was looking for alternatives and found uh, uh, electromuscle stimulation, EMS, to be uh, my solution. Uh, EMS, uh, very popular in Germany. A good friend of mine opened a studio many years back before, yeah, uh, before I opened mine. Uh, heard about it, never really tried it. Uh, then during my... My search for strength training alternatives, I tried it here in Malaysia and was immediately convinced 
uh, and it was I was so convinced about it that I thought, hey, that's a, that's a great business opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Malaysia not having so many EMS tools at a time, while uh, in Germany and in Europe it's been growing like mad. I mean, all the top clubs, uh, all the top national teams, the top uh, athletes are uh, have EMS as part of the training regime. So I uh, I felt this is a, a a good business idea, and 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 pursued that uh, from then on. Uh, did some uh, yeah uh, fitness certifications, be became a fitness professional, and quit my job in 2015. Opened my studio 2016, and as you said, uh, yeah, uh, my first clients were runners. So again, this is, yeah goosebumps is like this this running scene is just so amazing. Uh, 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 so good friends developed there and, and so much support this is within the, the runners, uh, among the runners. And it really helped me to, to get started with my business. And yeah, I've yeah. been open now nearly six years and uh, a big, big, big contribution to that uh, has come from the running, running scene. Great, great. I mean, congratulations, first of all. It's never easy doing your own thing and taking that leap of yeah. faith is, is a big one. So, um, if I can just try my best to explain what EMS is, I, I've, uh, I think when Carson opened, he, he kindly invited me and he invited a few of us to do a session and he gets you to put on this kind of pajama type suit and then sticks electrodes over a couple of places, uh, absolutely not painful. And then basically you just go through a, a, a quick workout, which is led by, by the instructor, depending on what you want to work on. And Carson and his team will zap you with electricity as you do it, and yep. uh, it's quite good fun. You're like, oh, I can feel something there, and then the next day you hurt like hell because it's uh, it's kind yes. of done three or four times a gym workout. So that's that's what I understand as EMS. Is yeah. that about right? Yeah, that's that's what you should feel. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. Uh, most important is uh, what, what you take away from it. Yeah, and uh, I mean the. EMS itself, the benefits are just amazing, and as yeah, you are emphasized, keep it short because uh, when I start talking about EMS, it takes <laughs> it takes a very long time. Uh, even when I talk to my clients, new clients, I really have to see their body language if they of zooming out already. Uh, yeah, it has uh, a lot of benefits. Uh, the most, the biggest benefit of all is that it's very short. Uh, it's typically twenty minutes. One session is typically twenty minutes. It's a strength training session, so it means that. It is the same thing as you do in a conventional gym with very heavy weights and working out with very heavy weights, staying within a certain uh, number of repetitions. Uh, you don't bulk up, so you're not getting a bigger, muscle, more muscular guy like Schwarzenegger or Hulk. You, you stay the, the person you are, you maintain your muscle mass, but the, the quantity of muscle that you have is improved or the quality of that muscle that you have is improved. Uh, and that has uh, plenty of benefits for runners. Typically, I mean, it's, it's uh, injury prevention, uh, things like runner's knee, uh, shin splints, uh, yeah, even even ITB bands. A lot of things like that are can be can be uh, avoided if you do proper strength training. So strength training is very important if you are a runner and you want to continue. It, you want to be consistent. It's uh, essential that you uh, include strength training as part of your training regime. Plus, it helps with performance as well. Uh, as yeah, to our lifestyle, very often we, we uh, some of our muscles in our body basically become less less utilized. Like we sit a lot in our current lifestyle, so the glutes, a very essential muscle for running, uh, is basically stretched a lot. So that makes it also very hard for the body to utilize it while running. With EMS, we we, we yeah we contract that muscle like nobody like nothing else, and help the body uh, to improve its utilization of the glutes. So it has uh, yeah plenty of benefits uh, beyond that much more as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm um, anyone who comes to some of my classes. I, I'm I'm a bit obsessed with with glutes and hips. For me, those are the, the two big areas of running that, yeah. that most of us yes. are pretty weak yeah. weak on, and most of us don't do anything with. You know, a lot of us do leg work and we focus on calves and quads, and of course they're important, but. Hips and glutes is, is, is my obsession, and, and, and I notice, um, particularly in the last two years because of COVID and the lockdown here in Malaysia, everyone's been working at home, they're, they're not in the office moving about, so they're, they're sitting a lot more than they're used to, um, and it's had a really detrimental effect on, on our bodies, and um, 
one big learning for me during COVID is is the importance of strength work, and we did all of the online sessions, which were which were great fun, and, and I learned yeah, a lot as a coach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so I, I think a lot of runners have realised that they they need to do more strength work, and and for those that are listening, if you're not really doing it at least once a week, you've got to consider that, and and please consider EMS as an option. Carsten's really yes, experienced, yeah. and his team, Hartimas, would be happy to to come and or to, yeah. to receive you and do a session, uh, really worth a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bye, and so, uh, we're always happy to to spread the knowledge and the news about EMS. Uh, so we we basically also consider ourselves as as advocates of EMS, uh, just to spread, uh, yeah, the, the knowledge about it. Drop by for a session. Uh, it's good to know about it, and uh, who knows, it may actually really really benefit you. Yeah, definitely do it, and. Uh, I think most people probably get a bit obsessed with mileage. It's quite normal with runners. We're, we're quite addictive personalities, and we we like to track our mileage and do silly silly targets, and uh, often just to take one step back and instead of doing an extra run to do a strength session might be worth, yeah. might be worth considering. Yeah. Uh, but everyone's different. Everyone's got their own needs. So, Carson, you're a big guy. You're you're what ninety kilos? Is it? Yeah. Uh, uh, typically near 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 that, yeah. Uh, right now, I'm happy with my 85, 86 kilos. I, I struggle to get below that, yeah. Okay, so this is not me um, <laughs> body shaming in any way. I just want to point out. So Carson is is a is a muscly runner and an incredibly good runner for for his size, and he's always keen to point that out. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Being a heavy runner, uh, what advice do you have for, for other heavy runners, be it people that maybe want to lose weight or other people that are gym gym heavy? Yeah, yeah I mean, like, as you said, I mean, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big big guy uh, to choose endurance sports, endurance running as my 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 obsession or passion uh, is is a, is a choice that is quite controversial and can be discussed. Yeah, uh, my my body is built. It's very heavy. I have around fifty percent of my body are, are muscles. Uh, not not showing off here, but I can't get rid of it. I tried with all kind of techniques, with fasted running, uh, no strength training for a while. Uh, tried to get rid of it, but uh, it hasn't happened yet. So yeah, uh, and as I'm an endomorph body body shape, uh, yeah, I'm very muscular. I believe also that most of my muscles are type 2 muscle fibers, which are more the energy consuming muscles. Runners prefer the type 1 muscle fibers, uh, which are smaller, less energy hungry, but are more enduring. Uh, so yeah, now for, for heavy runners uh, to consider is certainly to be, to be cautious. I mean, no doubt you, 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 you are heavy and uh, with every step when you run, you basically stress your joints with two to three times your, your body weight. So you do it a few thousand times during a run. Uh, so you can imagine that the body is, is quite taking a hit during that time. So yeah, what, what is important there when you start is to, to start carefully. Uh, typically, uh, the, yeah, the, the 10 the ten percent rule applies. It's not so scientific, but I think it's a good rule to not increase your mileage more than 10% week by week. And also, like every fourth week, ideally, take a step back, uh, reduce your mileage, let your body recover, and then uh, continue with your with the increase of your mileage. Then again, yeah, strength training is is very important, must not be neglected. Uh, like as mentioned before, typical run uh, running injuries like uh, shin splints and runner's knee are often very easily fixed with strength training. Uh, muscles as well offload the joints, uh, help the body to to be less stressed while running and uh, yeah and look at also at your at your movement during your runs uh, like I'm quite blessed I consider myself lucky and blessed that uh, my knees are doing very well I mean running is actually very good for, for the knees but when your knees do not move aligned uh, and wear and tear your, your cartilage in your knees or in your joints uh, one-sided it may lead to, to problems uh, later on so there are a few things to consider uh, start slowly, uh, increase your mileage carefully, do strength training, uh, give your body sufficient time to recover, and yeah, I mean, go to total running club sessions, uh, ask the trainer here to have a look at your running gait, uh, at your running form, if there's anything obvious. I mean, we can't do a, a 
detailed assessment without video, but yeah, just try to talk and engage uh, more experienced runners to get some advice. Yeah, that, that's really helpful. Thanks. Um, just to add my two cents on that, I, I totally agree. I think a lot of people are, are too quick to increase their mileage and, um, you know, there's always a temptation, oh, I really want to do that first marathon. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's not a huge point in doing it if you're, if you're going to suffer like hell and <laughs> if you're going to take eight hours to yeah. do it. You know, you're better to get that experience under your belt first and get a bit more mileage and get a bit quicker over the shorter distance. But uh, yes. I, I understand the attraction of, of doing a race. But, um, yeah, and, and consistency, I think, is important. Like, um, yeah. you've got to be patient if you want to improve as a runner. And yeah, that's not injury, easy. That's a very difficult most the main most not. difficult thing yeah, to be. Yeah, and to be I'm patient. sure you say this to your clients as well, Carson, but for me, when I when I work with someone privately, I, I always tell them that the primary objective is, is that we keep you injury-free. You know, everything else are, are secondary yes. objectives. Of course, we want to improve your performance, but we're not going to do that if you get injured. And, and that involves yes. patience, it involves structure, and it involves um, strength training as well, cross-training as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So that all wraps into what you're saying. That's great. So coming back to your sub three. So I, I'm really intrigued by this. Um, I mean, I, I know you're running quite well. And actually, uh, I remember pacing you to your sub sub 40 10K whenever that was, yeah. probably seven My years ago. One and so. only uh, sub, sub, sub 40 minutes. Yeah, which I enjoyed very yeah. much, the torture you were in. <laughs> uh, but you yeah. did great there. So, you, you know, you, you're uh, a talented runner, but sub three is going to be challenging. Um, how are you going to do that? Yeah. Yeah, it was like, again, a bit learning from, from Seoul, uh, training in more difficult climate conditions, which we have in Malaysia. Malaysia is, uh, well, good thing is we can run 365 days a year. We don't have winter icy roads uh, like, like in other places in the world. So we have uh, consistent condi conditions all year through. So training here under this condition is certainly uh, a benefit uh, in, in a certain way. Uh, it's very hard to perform here. I mean, for, again, for heavy runners like me, a lot of muscles, a lot of uh, muscles that consume energy while running, a lot of muscles that uh, produce heat in the body. So it's very difficult for me. I can see really big differences here now uh, lately when it was raining a bit more and temperatures dropped by three, four degrees. The runs felt so much easier. It was incredible. I thought, wow, I mean, that's that's very striking. Uh, so training here consistently, again, uh, what I suffered in the past as well, as you mentioned, was the lack of consistency. Uh, many years back, it was work. Uh, in recent years, it was injury. Uh, small injuries, relatively, because I still could run run later, or could continue my running, but uh, four, six weeks of uh, injury already are enough to to set you back for months. Uh, we, it was like one, two, one or two years ago, I was injured for four, for four weeks. And then when I came back, it took me three months to, to actually be back at the level when, when I was, when I got injured. So it's really, really important to avoid injury. Uh, and I found a good way now, yeah, with running with, with power, which helps me to, to uh, dose my, my effort during my runs very well. Uh, uh, it measures the running stress uh, very well over 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 the days and week week over week. So I'm currently now yeah uh, training with, with power. Have made good good experience with that. I mean I was very fit 2020 when I again wanted to run uh, Seoul, but then uh, the pandemic hit hit the whole world and uh, it came maybe just two months too early for me. Otherwise I would have run uh, Seoul in 2020. Who knows what would have happened? I was pretty okay, pretty fit. Uh, so yeah, it's how to now reach uh, sub three is to train here in Malaysia consistently with a good strategy, for me it's power, and then choose a marathon in a colder climate. So for now again, I'm back uh, with Seoul in 2022 next year. So uh, there's no, no date out yet, but it should be on the 20th of March because they also have mm. this kind of a, a a rule of, of having their event in, in the third week of March. Uh, yeah, and I hope that it will take place. I'm training for that now. So my training plan aims for that 20th of March. Okay. But if that not happens, uh, uh, just continue and look for the next victim. 
which, uh, yeah, then hopefully could be an uh, option, could be Germany. Uh, there are some flat marathons at the cool climates when it's spring. So I hope to achieve it in 2022, but let's see. Again, it's a matter of time. If I come closer to the three hours, it's already a good success. If I can beat my PB from 2013, it's a big success. And sub three, well, I won't give up uh, at the moment to go for that. And do you... Do you see yourself running late, uh, at a very late age? Do you plan to continue running, even just for fun? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, there are inspiring people around, like uh, James Willis here in Malaysia at the moment. Uh, uh, yeah, Daniel Chan, uh, yeah, the king of, king of mountains. Uh, yeah, so I hope I'm, I, I, I can run like them uh, at at a very high level performance level at, uh, well, age is just a number. And yeah, I really, really want to stay fit, uh, leverage on my learning. So the last 10 years that I run more intense, more consistency, avoid injury. And I, at the moment, yeah, I can't see any kind of retirement. And I, even from a uh, uh, competitive running, uh, that, that keeps me basically, basically going. I mean, it's part of the reasons why I run. It's this competitive uh, feeling when running, the the yeah the aim and the training towards it. I mean, the, the journey towards the competitions. All that is a very exciting, exciting experience that running gives you. Totally agree. Okay, Garson, three questions for you. Quick fire ones. What's your favorite Malaysian food? Oh, that's uh, mamak mi goreng. Definitely, okay. it helped me to gain 20 kilos uh, when <laughs> I was here in the 90s. And it took me 10 years to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not, not to be eaten every day, but now and again, no problem. <laughs> and yeah, there was a bit harder to get. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, let me, but, let me ask you on that. Is it okay to eat uh, those kind of foods as a, as a sports guy? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, also, with, with diets, I, I made my my I, I made my journey uh, try different things. But yeah, I mean, uh, there's no bad food. You can eat anything as long as it's in moderation. Moderation. And there's always running to burn a few more calories. <laughs> yeah, that's why a lot of us do it. Uh, okay, and if there was yeah. one sporting event in the world, and I'm not talking about the Olympics, so I mean one event that you can enter, uh, I think none of us are going to hit the Olympics anymore. But if, what, what yeah. would that event be for you that, that, that would be uh, an iconic event you'd love to do? Yeah, as, as I can answer with the Olympics, okay, then <laughs> it must be Berlin then. Uh, yeah, the Berlin Marathon. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's still the place where I, I come from. It's the fastest marathon route. And yeah, again, I still aim for PBs on any kind of distance until full marathon distance. And certainly want to run Berlin uh, when I'm in, in my top shape. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just run the best time possible. That would be, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and last question for you, Garcia. What, what is it that you love about running? I know we've touched on a few things, but if there's yeah. one thing, what is the what is the thing yeah. you love most about running? Yeah, uh, it's it's really uh, to boil it down. It's really the people. I mean, the, the people that I met uh, uh, when running. I mean, I mentioned before. I mean, the whole thing, the whole feeling of of running. People that you meet, the feedback that you get, uh, the the knowledge that people share among each other and uh, i mean the fact as well that runners helped me to to start my my business as well i mean for once they inspired me and second they also helped me once i opened my place uh yeah end of april 2016 uh, things that you don't forget in your life and the first clients that came in and the the, the first sales that you make i mean that's all runners uh, mm. so it's the people yeah Okay, great. Okay, well, it's been an enjoyable chat. Thank you, Carsten. Um, just to stress Thank again, you, Jeff, again anyone, for having me. It was big fun. No, not at all. So, uh, please do check out Fit Orange. They're based in Sri Hartamas. Um, just to stress, it's not yeah. just for runners. <laughs> Carsten's got a lot of yeah. runners that follow, but anyone can, can yes. join and, and it's worth a try. It's something very different. It's still not that well known in Malaysia, so uh, go yeah. and give it a go. Um, it's a big thing, actually. Yeah. yeah. 
okay. Uh, otherwise, we will see you out on the streets, Carson. I know you're helping me with a few classes yep. in, the, in the coming months. Thank you for that. So if anyone wants yep. to be Always coached by Carson that, yeah. on the running scene, just keep an eye on our website. Um, you're helping me on Saturday, in fact. So thank you. And uh, yep. I'll see you then. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everyone. Yep.